Okay, this is my motorcycle seat finished, and I've been kind of uh, reluctant to put this up because I'm not really happy with this seat. It, uh, it's quite plain to me. It just, just didn't turn out the way I liked it, and besides the fact, it has wrinkles in it. And I don't like wrinkles. So what I've decided to do is we're just going to reupholster it. We will resand it, reshape it, and redesign this motorcycle saddle seat. I was envisioning something maybe with a little bit more of a bucket in it like this, a little bit rounder. And I think I'm just going to put a little rise like this back here. Just totally reshape this seat, make it into something a little different than this. Hopefully you guys won't even recognize this seat when we uh, redesign it. And so uh, look forward to redesigning this and making something fancy out of something plain. That's what the plan is. And. Uh, We'll put that up under uh, how to sand, reshape, and redesign motorcycle saddle seat. And it will be much, I hope you don't recognize it. We'll see you then. Thanks. Okay. We went from this motorcycle seat to this motorcycle seat. On my first video, how to sand and shape foam rubber, we show you exactly how we made the foam rubber for this seat. Starting with the seat pan and a block of foam rubber, cut and shaped this seat, or this seat, and I I got done with this seat and I just didn't really like it. I wanted to change it a little bit. I wanted something a little wider, something a little bit deeper, something a little bit fancier. So I came up with this one. Now this one too, of course, I'm not exactly 100% happy with it. I've never done anything that I can't find a flaw in. But I got these wrinkles and I don't like it. There's uh, two ways of fixing it. One, we can put a red button here, tie it over on the other side, and just squeeze it in like that. And I think it would look good. So give me a, a, um, a comment on whether I should just put buttons in here or redo the seat. Either way, I can get rid of those wrinkles. Certainly it's not the fault of these tools. Now these tools, is uh, they, they work so good. They work so fast. Now as an auto trimmer, you should have at least a 5-inch fix-it fast because there are so many places where foam rubber is, well, you know, on the driver's side of the seat, it's all wore out. You just glue in a piece of foam, shape it down to what you want. So fast, so easy. Um, so this is what I came up with. I think it's a little bit different. It's a little wider. I put something on the back of it. I pretended like it was a red motorcycle, so we put red trim on it. Um, just use your imagination. Now, I gotta tell you the truth, this is really the second motorcycle seat I've ever made. This was the first one I've ever made. I do antique furniture and classic automobiles. Motorcycle seats, that's not really what I do. But I guess if I started doing them, I would um, get rid of this kind of stuff. I realize here you gotta exaggerate these cuts a little bit. I'm having problems in here. Just, you know, you learn as you go. Like I say, this is only the second one I've ever made, so hey, not too bad for the second motorcycle seat I ever made. Um, now with these tools, you know, like I say, you should have at least this. But this one here, you can do a lot with just a, a groovy groover. But if you really want to do motorcycle saddle seats in here, you really need to have a, a deep dish. But uh, as an auto trimmer, you should at least have a 5 inch fix it fast. So you can find me you know, at DunnersCutters.com and um, look at these tools. You'll love them, absolutely love them, and they last forever. Okay. All right, now with this video, I am going to introduce my new disc, which is a four and one quarter inch short wire fabulous finisher. It's used for finishing and for when you just want to kind of slow down a little bit because these tools, they do work very quickly with a light touch. So when you want to slow down and do a little bit of finish work, this tool works very, very good for that. Now, I have redesigned this seat from this to this. I, I'm happy enough with it. It turned out all right, especially after I put these fancy buttons in there. That really, really kind of dresses it off and makes it look good. And um, it's good enough, especially if you have a red motorcycle. Um, now, I envisioned something with a little bit of a lip back here, but there's just not room here for that. So... It's just going to have to be like it is. I think it does look better and fancier than that. And there it is, finished, good enough. So we'll move on and uh, we'll show you uh, how I went from this to this and where this little tool comes in handy. So you might want to watch the very short video on how we go from this to this and introduction of my four and a quarter inch.
fabulous finisher. Okay. Okay, how to reshape and redesign a motorcycle saddle seat. I made this seat out of a piece of uh, foam rubber and uh, it's, it just didn't turn out like what I expected. I, I just kind of expected a little more of a bucket, a little wider, a little deeper bucket. So I decided to redo it. Now what I did was I added an inch and a half on each side and what I'm going to show you is I cut, you know, glued that piece on there and I need something to fill in here and something to fill in here. So I just use pieces of scrap foam. I have a, a uh, foam box that I just throw all my scrap foam in. I just find a little piece like this piece will just glue right in there like that. We'll trim it down, sand it off. This piece will glue right in here like that. And then of course we'll have to get a piece up here and a piece up there. So I'm going to go off camera, get those glued up and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. Alright, now I got all my miss Galenius pieces glued in there. It's time to start shaping it. Um, now what I've done here is I have uh, made myself an air ex uh, experimental model here. This is a very short wire. Oops, it needs to be tightened up. This is a very short wire um, disc that I've made for doing fine work like this. Now I've used this regular disc with the longer wires on it for doing this side, but I'm quite used to using this tool. Uh, so for, you know, a beginner, maybe you might want to use a smaller, a shorter wire. So for a limited time offer, I am going to be sending a free short wire disc with any order of a full set. Either a three and a half inch disc or a five inch disc, whichever you prefer. So we just need to go ahead and start shaping this. Like I said, I'd rather have my electric motor than this thing, but I suppose this thing will work. Anything will work if it works. Let's give it a shot. I should tighten it up with a screwdriver, huh? Well, I have one of those. This little finisher does work. I just like something that works faster. So we're going to put my uh, regular one back on here, but that offer still stands if anybody wants a short wire one that works a little bit slower. <laughs> still works better than 36 grit sandpaper, but I don't know. Works too slow for me. Okay. Okay. I like the fast working one. So here we go. We're going to need the deep dish in there. All right.
this is where that little short wire might come in handy. Closer. Just gotta remember this is a touch tool. You touch it very lightly, it works very quickly. And like I said, you really should nail these things down somehow, but I'm not doing it the way I should. deep dish in there. Alright, so I used the deep dish. I got it all finished up in here. I think we've got this about what we want. Um, By the way, I figured out why these things were unscrewing. This thing here, as you guys know, it stops immediately and that unscrews the darn thing. I've been used to just putting these things on finger tight and um, you really should put them, put them on tight with a tool, you know, that's the way you should do things. Now I do need to finish this up a little bit as you can see. I've got to round this off the way this is rounded off. I got a little more in here to do. I think that's where this little short wire will come in handy. I think I've tightened this one up. Should have a bigger screwdriver than that, but I don't feel like looking for it. That work. So I don't suppose in a hurry and think these things come apart. It's just annoying. So we just want to finish this up, smooth it out a little bit down in here. On second thought, I do like this little guy. It does come in quite handy. Yeah, 
This little short wire works pretty good. I like it. Makes things a much easier. All right, I think the only thing I got left to do on this, I want to kind of build this up a little bit. I'm just going to glue a piece like this in there. Take my foam rubber knife, trim it off, take this and make it nice and fitted. You don't need to see that. But the next time we'll catch up is doing the reupholstery on this. I think I have maybe a little more shaping in here to do this. Looks like this needs to be shaped out a little bit. And who knows, I may put a piece of this uh, half inch foam right on here, pull the whole thing forward a little bit. That's the thing about this, you just kind of figure it out along the way. You do this, you do that, and before you know it, you got yourself a motorcycle saddle seat just the way you want it. I like this. It'll get there. All right. Okay, we finally got this thing uh, shaped up and ready to go, so I'm just going to throw the cover on. We hope it fits right. Now, as before, the first thing we have to do is glue this down right here. So I got a center mark, a center mark here. We're okay on your sides. When you glue this down, you want to make sure it goes in the right place the first time. set up to where it's tacky you know it's got to be tacky got our center mark here our center mark there and our line here that's what we're going on you say you get that down in there it's got to be right because it is not moving once it's down now I've got pre-cut now, since I did not sew this up with uh, foam rubber like I did the last one, you're going to have to put a piece of Dacron or foam rubber in there, whatever you want, whatever you choose to do. I chose to do the Dacron because I don't have any quarter inch foam. And so you just get down in there where it's supposed to be. Not more spray a little bit of glue in there just so that it doesn't go any place. That's not going any place. And here I already got that piece in there. So this is going to have to be kind of the same way. far as gluing this this down right here. So I'm going to put that little piece in there. As you see I can leave, I leave a little gap here for these seams to glue into. And I went and turned that air compressor off, didn't I? I'm going to turn it back on. I forgot. Okay. I went ahead and I got some glue in there. Probably don't have to glue this one down, but I'm going to glue it down anyway. I can see my little mark where the center is. Get your seam glued right on there. This is the most important one to glue down. This one here. Now if you don't have a glue pot, you just use some brush glue. Alright, on. Okay, it's tacking ready to go. We're gluing right to that line there. 
And then I got these pieces pre-cut to go right on in there. Right on there like that. And this is when we find out whether the darn thing fits or not. Alright, I guess this piece goes on like that. And this piece goes on like that. Now this is when we find out whether it fits or not, huh? Alright, now this seat would have been much much easier to have done if I had brought this around like this on the other one instead of down like this but I wanted it to be fancy and hopefully all these wrinkles will pull out if they don't then you guys will never see this video but it's got to pull out if it doesn't we'll say it should have alright Hole right there, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to do this the easy way this time instead of using pop rivets.
So I think we go ahead and get the rest of this pulled on down into place and I think we'll have most of these things pulled out of there. So uh, we're going to shut it off now and we'll go ahead and finish this up. You don't need to watch me do it. As you can see you just pull all these things in, kind of pull it in the direction it needs to be pulled to pull these wrinkles out. You can see just see what we're doing here. See, we just get them pulled out. May have to move these a little bit here and there, but uh, it's no big deal. You just get things where they need to be. Slowly but surely, we get it on her. I'm not exactly happy with it, but hey, I'm never happy with anything I do. I just do it the best I can. And that's the way it turned out. It's not going to be perfectly wrinkle free. But I will get most of them pulled out of there. So, you'll see it when I finish it up in this... Oh, well, this is why I didn't sew this up in uh, quarter inch square because I put this red top stitching on it. And the thicker your stuff is that you sew, the harder it is to make these seam straight. And when you contrast, a uh, seam that is not straight shows up real fast. So I'll finish this up off camera and we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. <laughs>